this video on manipulating cinema. Now I'm using what's called window pane cinema and I have probably just over a meter of cinema here that I'm going to use. It was a horrible discolored piece so I've dyed it. Now what you need to do for this is you need to cut your cinema across the bias so across from corner to corner. The whole point of this is to have something to manipulate like all bias fabrics so you can't cut straight strips you have to cut them across. So I've cut off a triangle from one side here. If you cut a proper bias you get more stretch and you can make this as wide as you like but for this purpose you can see this is the type of size I'm using. Now to manipulate it we need a steam iron. So we fold it over and we pull, twist and bend exactly the same way perhaps you would swirl Petersham. The more you twist and bend, the more you uh, steam, the more you can get manipulation into the cinema. Now I'm cutting off the excess here because I only want quite a narrow piece. So just to get it out of the way to make it easier to manipulate, I'm just cutting off all those corners and bits I don't want. And you can see already it's starting to bend into a curve. You can pull it out to widen it. Although, as I said, you can cut it wider. You can steam it again, pull it more, curve it more. This takes a while to do, and it depends really what you're looking what you're looking for at the in the end result. But you can do this with any cinema. It doesn't have to be window pane. It was just that that was what I had available at the time. So you can see it's curling and it will curl round nicely as well. So I'm going to use this piece for the main decoration. I'm then going to cut another piece because I've decided I'd like sort of a brim edge to this hat. And so I want to do another piece in the same, in the same way. The more you play with the cinema, the more you bend it, the more you curl it, the more you stretch it and steam it, the more you can do with it. But you can see that it curls. Now, obviously, I need a top for this. Now, the window pane cinema, even with two or three layers, is not stiff enough for the base. So I'm using a piece of plain grey cinema for the very underneath and then two layers of the blue on top. And I'm going to block that onto a button block to make my base. Now I've got the main piece of my hat that I'm happy with. And you can see I'm, my base is being blocked there and I'm going to have this swirl around somehow. But as with all my videos, I'm making this up as I go along. So the design could be different at the end. Now I need to wire this. I need to give it strength. So I've got a piece of craft wire. I folded over the ends into a loop so that there's no nasty sharp bits of wire sticking in anybody. And I'm going to stitch that in place with a zigzag stitch on the machine although of course you can do that by hand. Now to edge it you can use bias binding, you can use Petersham but as I didn't have anything in the right colour I made my own bias strip from the cinema as you can see. So I've made a bias strip roughly the length I want I'm going to curve it a bit with my steam iron again so that it fits nicely round. It's just to cover up the wire and give a neat finish to the side. You do get lots of bits with window pane. It, it frays rapidly. 
So I'm going to put it over the edge. I'm going to leave a long piece there so that I can cut that off perfectly to fit. And then I'm going to place my bias all the way along and stitch it down. You can do this either by hand or with a machine, whichever you feel happy doing. That's my blocked base, as you can see, and it's quite firm because I've used normal cinema underneath the blue. And now I'm looking about to see how my brim and my uh, sort of feathery edge bit will, will um, go. I love my little iron, it's so handy. <laughs> my little tiny iron. I want to curve it a bit more, so I'm pulling and stretching. And this is going to be my brim piece. And I'm going to figure out a way of placing out all the pieces I want on my button block so that I can get a nice uh, shape. You can have the brim up, you can have the brim down, you can fiddle about with it. If it's wider, you can have it sort of concave and then convex, you can do what you like. But I didn't want to make this wide because I didn't have enough cinema. <laughs> anyway, let's get on with it. So what I've done with that brim, I've actually done a running stitch around the middle because I wanted it to curve even more. So by doing a running stitch and pulling up the thread a little bit, it gives me even more of a curve. And what I'm going to do is figure out how it's going to go around the hat and where I need to cut it off or edge it, etc. So I'm using clips just to clip it into place because this will all need stitching to the inside of the hat. Be careful with cinema because it can act like splinters and actually get stuck into your skin like splinters. I've, many a time I've had to pull pieces of cinema out my fingers. So I reached around there and I've realised that I'm going to have to edge the very long pointy bit. So I'm probably going to stitch another piece of bias on it, but I'm not wiring this piece. And then it'll have a little brim that will go up or down or whichever way I want it. Now with my other piece, I was checking to see whether I wanted to put it over the brim, under the brim, or how I wanted it to perform. Now, I could have just had it as a long twirly bit at the top, but I've decided against that, and I'm going to do more of an architectural shape. So I'm going to end up taking it all apart and working out exactly where I want the bits to be. And then they all have to be stitched to the base carefully so that you don't see your stitching. Then when you've finished, a sweatband will need to be stitched to the inside with small stitches. I've put a hat elastic... And voila, the hat is finished. The brim will turn up, the brim will turn down. And I just think that makes a very attractive cocktail hat for an event. So there we are. I hope you've enjoyed this short video and found it helpful. And I look forward to speaking to you again.